generic goblin noise. Hey gang, and welcome back. Just a reminder, you can use the promo code MTGMUDSTA at FlipSideGaming.com. You'll get 10% off orders of $10 or more, and help with the channel at the same time. You could also consider turning off your ad blocker when watching my videos. Today's game finds us back at Labis in Saint-Michel, and I'm playing Erebos, keeping a hand with Read the Bones, Thought Vessel, Mutilate, Two Swamps, Nurkana Revenant, and Noxious Gear Hulk. Scott has joined me and is borrowing a deck playing Tishana, keeping an island, Flooded Strand, Skur Tribe Elder, Curious Follower, Disallow, and Growing Rights of Itlamok. Guilhem, who has joined us all the way from France, has borrowed my Doretti deck since he's the most familiar with the deck, and keeps three Mountains, Grim Monolith, Burnished Heart, Kark Clan Ironworks, and a Blightsteel Colossus. And last but not least, we have Arnaud playing Karn Silver Golem, keeping Scour from Existence, Mirror Works, Gilded Lotus, Scroll Rack, Mace of Ith, Mystifying Maze, and Gyre Reach Sanitarium. Scott wins the die roll and starts us off. Scott plays an island and passes. Guilhem plays a mountain and also passes. Arnaud plays a mage ring network, passing to me. I play a swamp and I pass to Scott. Scott plays a flooded strand, cracking it for one and goes to find a breeding pool. He has it come in untapped, taking two and casts a Kur Tribe Elder. Guilhem plays a mountain and casts Grim Monolith. Arnaud plays a mystifying maze and he casts Scroll Rack. I play a Swamp, and I cast Thought Vessel. At the end of turn, Scott sacrifices Steve to go and find a basic forest. Scott draws for turn, and he casts a Simic Signet, followed by a Cure's Follower. Guilhem plays a Mountain, and he casts Burnished Heart. Arnaud plays a Frexia's Core, and he activates the Rack. He sets aside his hand, and he draws a brand spanking new one. I play a Swamp for my turn, and I cast Read the Bones. I scry both cards to the bottom, drawing two and losing two life. I then cast an Ivory Tower, and I pass my turn. Scott draws for turn, and casts Growing Rights of Itlamok. With the trigger in the stack, Guilhem cracks a Burnished Heart to go and find two mountains from his library, and puts them onto the field. Scott reveals a Birds of Paradise from the Growing Rights trigger, and he casts it while our node puts a counter on the Mage Ring network. Moving to combat, Scott swings the follower at Guilhem for two points of damage. Guilhem plays a mountain, and he brings out his copy of Karn Silver Golem, saying hello to Arno's copy. Arnaud plays a copy of Urza's Tower as his land for turn, and he casts an unstable obelisk. On my upkeep, the Ivory Tower triggers, and I gain two life thanks to it. I then draw for turn, but can't draw a land, so I cast Beseech the Queen. I grab and reveal Cabal Coffers, playing it and passing to Scott. Scott taps out on his main phase, using the Follower to untap its Birds of Paradise. He pays six mana to cast Bane of Progress, and with the Bane trigger on the stack, Arnaud taps his obelisk to put a counter on his Mage Ring network. The Bane destroys all enchantments and artifacts, which just so happens to be two from each of us. The Bane of Progress gains 8 plus 1 plus 1 counters, and Scott passes turn. Guilhem plays a Mountain and casts his copy of Unstable Obelisk. He then drops Kark Clan Ironworks, and he passes. Removing two counters from his Mage Ring network, Arnaud plays an Altered Guildlord Lotus. He then taps a Lotus to cast a Topor Orb, and he passes turn. I activate Cabal Coffers in my main phase, generating three black mana. I use two of it to cast Jet Medallion, and then tap my last swamp and use the one floating to cast a Withered Wretch. Scott draws for turn, but his land starved like I am. He swings the Bane of Progress at Arnaud for 10, and passes turn. Guilhem plays a Mountain, and has a surprising amount of mana for a mono red deck. He taps his Obelisk for 1, and then sacrifices it and the Ironworks to the Ironworks ability. He then taps all of his lands, and drops a Blightsteel Colossus. Scott has a counter though, with Disallow, and Guilhem then shuffles it into his library. Arnaud plays a Gyre Reach Sanitarium as his land for turn, and passes. I draw for turn, but with no land to play, I activate my coffers to make enough mana to cast Erebos. I overtap, but I correct myself before passing to Scott. Scott also has no lands to play, and he moves to combat. He swings the Bane of Progress at Arnaud, who activates his Mystifying Maze to exile the Bane and return it to the field. Scott counters his activated ability with a Void Slime, and Arnaud takes another 10. Guilhem plays a Metal Worker in his main phase, and brings out Doretti. He upticks to ready, discarding a card, and drawing a card. Arnaud draws for turn, and we all seem to be a bit light on the lands outside of Guilhem. He then resolves his commander, Karn Silver Golem, and he passes to me. I draw for turn, and still can't find a land. I activate the coffers for three, and tap my last swamp to use Erebos' ability twice, losing four life and drawing two cards. Thankfully I hit a swamp, playing it, and I pass, discarding down to seven. Scott draws, and doesn't share my luck. He moves to combat, swinging the Cure as follower, and Bane at Doretti. Guilhem decides to just let Doretti go, and Scott then passes. Guilhem is having the opposite problem as Scott and I, and he drops an Urza's Tower for his land for turn. 
He then pays 6 to cast Doretti, upticking the walker to discard a mountain. He passes turn, and at the end of turn, Arnold puts a counter on his main ring network. For Arnaud's turn, we see a Maze of Ith as his land for turn, and he pays 5 to cast a Mirrorworks. I draw for turn, and I play a Deserted Temple. I activate the Cabal Coffers for 4 mana, and pay 1 more to cast a Harvester of Souls. I then pass to Scott, who, at the end of my turn, casts Beast Within on the Maze of Ith. Scott draws for turn, and he moves to combat, swinging the same way with the Bane and the Follower going at Doretti. Gidem flashes in a Shimmer Mirror, and blocks the Follower with the Mirror, and the Bane with his Metalworker. In Scott's second main phase, with his combat step foiled, he casts a Guard Gamazoa, and he passes turn. Gilem draws for turn, and he casts the card, dropping a Worm Quill Engine to the field. I realize my inability to draw is not solely for Mystic Study, and I put the Die of Shame on my Harvester of Souls as a reminder. Gilem then upticks to ready, but with nothing to pitch, he doesn't draw a card. He then passes turn. Arno drops a Blink Moth Urn in his main phase, and he pays 2 to make a token copy of it with Mirrorworks. He then passes to me. In my first main phase, I gain 2 colorless mana from the urn triggers, and I forget about it immediately as I pay for Nurkana Revenant. And I pass to Scott. Scott draws for turn, and finally finds his fourth land. He plays a forest, but does nothing but pass. Gilem also gains 2 colorless from his urn triggers in his main phase, and he actually uses them to help pay for his Mind Slaver. He then moves to combat, and Scott is quick to use the Crossing Grip to destroy the troublesome artifact. Gilem then moves to his second main phase, upticking to ready, and passing turn. Arno gains a whopping 12 colorless mana in his main phase because of his two Blink Moth urns. He doesn't even need to tap a land to cast Cosmic Butcher of Truth, and he draws 4 on cast. He plays a Dust Bowl as his land for turn, he then casts a Darksteel Forge, paying 2 to make a copy of it for good measure with his Mirrorworks. I draw for turn, and I play a Swamp in my main phase. I tap my Cabal Coffers to make some mana, untapping it with the Deserted Temple before retapping it for more. I then tap enough Swamps to cast Black Sun Zenith, where X is 12, to wipe the board. I shuffle the sorcery in, and then counting up all the creatures that died, draw a nice chunk of cards. I then pass my turn, and discard down to 7. Scott plays a forest for his turn, and he passes. Gilem draws, and he plays a mere retriever. He then upticks to ready, and passes turn. Arnold gains 14 mana in his main phase from his urn triggers, and I realize that I haven't been using the mana that he's been giving me. He plays a homeward path, and uses some of that floating mana to cast a book of wraths. He then pays 8 mana and 8 life, drawing 4 cards from activating the book 4 times. Arno then casts a Platinum Imperion, and makes a token copy of it with his Mirrorworks. I play a Swamp for my turn, and activating my coffers help pay for Meogen of Night's Reach. I then pass to Scott. Scott draws, and has nothing to do, so he passes. Gilem uses Doretti's ultimate, and gains the Doretti emblem. With nothing else, he passes to Arno. Arno gains more than enough mana in his main phase to recast Karn's Silver Golem, and also casts a Planar Portal. He activates it, and goes to find a card, and put it into his hand. We then see a Chroma's Memorial hit the stack, and I make a bit of a hasty decision with the spell on the stack to remove my Divinity Counter from my Myojin. All of my opponents discard their hand. Arnaud doesn't seem to really mind, as he activates Karn's ability several times to make all of his huge artifacts into flying hasty creatures with protection from basically everything that Guillem and I can do. Moving to combat, he swings lethal at Guillem, and 23 points of damage worth at me. I draw for turn, and I play Nykthos Shrine to Nyx. I cast a Bubbling Muck, making my swamps tap for 2 this turn. I then activate the Cabal Coffers for 6 black, and pay enough to wipe the board with Black Sun Zenith, which I just redrawn. I then cast Burnished Heart, after shuffling in my Black Sun Zenith, and I pass. Scott draws, and he passes. Arno draws, and gains a boatload of mana as main phase once more. It's a simple matter for him to recast Karn, Silver Golem, and animate his board of artifacts to swing enough creatures and render the entire table dead. Game review time! So there was a bit of odd threat assessment in this game, and I'm really not too sure why everyone kind of let Arnaud do whatever he wanted to do. Scott did a great job of disrupting key plays, but unfortunately he ran out or the answers he had were too expensive to cast because he didn't have any lands. I'm also surprised that he switched to attacking Doretti because Doretti was nowhere near its ultimate, and Arnaud was getting a bigger and bigger board state. I feel bad for Guilhem because I lent him my Doretti deck, and it didn't really perform very well, forcing him to draw a billion lands and never really any gas. That being said, I'm really glad he reached out to me, and if you're ever in Montreal or New Jersey and are considering joining me for a game, be sure to message me on Facebook or Twitter, and we'll see if we can set something up. Arnaud's Karn deck was filthy and disgusting and super powerful, and I never want to record with him again. But in all honesty, it was really cool to see, and I'm glad he built it and was able to get it on camera. It performed so much better than I ever thought it would, and it was a lot of fun to see. 
Please be sure to tune in every Monday and Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at MTGMudsta. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash MTGMudsta. And lastly, you can check me out when I stream at twitch.tv slash MTGMudsta. This video is brought to you in support by my patrons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit the link below. Thank you all for watching this video, and don't forget, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.